This time we actually are going to act, talk about hub and spoke VNets and kind of what that means for private endpoints and private DNS zones. We're going to skip, oh, we're going to skip this picture, which was a single VNet, and we're going to move on to the multi VNet. And so, but in this case, we have multiple networks that are paired together. And what we're going to end up doing, we're going to have worker VNets, spoke VNets, where we're going to run custom VMs or containers, compute. And we have private endpoints to our Azure resources so that we don't have to connect over the internet. The goal here is to figure out how we're going to use Azure resources using private endpoints and get DNS to work so that we can get to those private link endpoints by name from anywhere we want. And it turns out that is actually done through something called the virtual network link. So every Azure resource has its own domain, every Azure resource type. So storage, uh, Cosmo, storage accounts, um, event hub, any of those things, even in storage accounts, blobs and files have separate DNS zones, different DNS domain names, and those end up in different zones. And so what we do when we use a private endpoint is we bring up the private endpoint in the NIC that creates a back channel to the Azure resource so we don't have to go to the internet. And then that NIC uh, domain name for that, my storage dot whatever dot private dot whatever ends up registered in a private DNS zone. And what you need to do when you have multiple VNets, the right thing to do, if you can, is you create one private DNS zone for each domain. And because it's possible to create as many of these uh, zones as you want. And so if you were to bring up a Cosmos endpoint in one VNet, a Cosmos endpoint in another VNet, they actually could be in pri different private DNS zones with the same name, but their scopes would be small enough that that, that private DNS zone would only be visible in that VNet. But that's not what I want. What I want for my world is I want all my resources to be in my global company namespace, and we're going to do that through the private DNS zones. So every storage account we've got, no matter where it is or owned by which team, is going to end up in the private DNS zone for storage accounts, right? Uh, for files or for blobs, one of those two. And so, like I said before, the way this works is we have an Azure um, storage account and then we if the file version of that or the blob version or the table version we create a private endpoint we create a nick on it the ip the p for that nick we know what it is that gets registered as a dns in the file or blob or um, table dns zone and then that dns zone is virtual network linked to all of our vnets right so we create one set of private DNS zone, one for each domain that we're going to have an Azure resource for. And then we virtual link those to any VNet where that resource may, may need to be accessed. So if team, this is team one and team two over here needs to access a storage account owned by another team, then what we would do is we'd make sure that that private VNet for that store, for all the storage accounts was a virtual network link to that spoke VNet. So this is hub and spoke. Oh, I probably didn't really talk about that. Typically in these situations, when you uh, do this, you have a hub for management or a centralized networking hub VNet, and then you have spoke VNets for workloads. And so in this case, I have three spoke VNets for the workloads and I've got one hub VNet. Sorry, I forgot about that because I did another talk just a little while ago on this and forgot what I had said in this one. And so what happens is, um, so, if, if this spoke VNet over here needs to reach this private endpoint, because these are all peered, routing exists. Uh, and so what it would happen is it would go to the Azure DNS that's in that VNet. And there's an Azure custom Azure, I mean, a standard Azure VNet on a standard IP address available in every VNet. And that DNS there would be forwarded, had forwarding capability to the private DNS zone. So if I need to talk to a storage bucket, uh, the resource in this spoke VNet uh, would basically go and do a DNS lookup <clears throat> against its Azure DNS, which would really do a DNS lookup against the private zone for that domain, for the storage bucket, I mean, uh, like file or blob domain. That would give it an IP address, and because we have network pairing, the traffic would actually go up through the, to the VNet and then back down to the spoke VNet. And yes, I have tested this, um, assuming I tested the right thing. Anyway, and then in this case also, uh, we had a VPN tunnel and so to make VPN tunnels work, you got to have a DNS forwarder that gets configured into the VPN gateway. And we do that here. And because that forwarder is bound to the local Azure DNS for that VNet, and that VNet has a virtual network link that forwards 
certain domains off to the private DNS zones. That means anybody on this tunnel can actually make a query against the private endpoint, assuming there's no other issues like access controls or anything. It will get the IP address from this DNS, from this DNS that forwarded to this DNS that went off to the private DNS, and that had been populated when the NIC and the private endpoint were created. So that's let's just go walk through this real quick. Um, man, that didn't work because I totally didn't stop the timer correctly. So um, let's just look. I actually did this in a project uh, on this GitHub repo, and the repo will be in the video. A link. So in this case, I've got a file, a storage account blob, and a storage account file uh, private DNS zones, right? So a storage account can have multiple containers. It can be and can have support blob and file uh, data stores in it. And so in the, each one of those stores that I created, either a blob or a file, would actually get registered in these central private DNS. And I made sure that everybody is using the same DNS. Basically, I just attached them to the hub VNet. And so everybody gets registered with the hub VNet. So in this case, um, it's hub VNet, hub resource group. So in this case, I always make sure I've got one private DNS zone for each name. And then in the spoke VNet itself here, I've got subnets, which is what these three are. And then you might not be able to read this. And then I've got a storage account file and a storage account blob, right? So I have the storage account file, the storage file private link endpoint or private endpoint as it's sometimes called and the storage file network interface which has a ip address which has a domain address the domain address for the file got registered in the file.core.windows.net or it might be file.private.core.windows.net and um and then so the other vnet resources in this vnet or others can look it up that way so let's i'm going to walk you through this pretty quick so I have, you know what, we're going to make this a little smaller, which will be annoying to some people. So if we start off, I've got two VNets. I've got a hub VNet and a spoke VNet, and they're in the same resource group because I put all my VNets in the same resource group for this particular project because I didn't want to go too far. So I have one hub, one spoke. If we, and then in those VNets, there are a bunch of subnets, right? So on the hub, because it's a management subnet, a management VNet, that's where I put my DNS for uh, the VPN gateway, and that's where I put my Bastion host subnet and I put my gateway um, gateway subnet. And then it turns out in my spoke, I have um, some subnets. I've got a default one for compute. I've got a data one, which is actually where the private endpoints for Cosmos are going to go. And then I have uh, credential secrets, which would be where the private endpoint for Key Vault would go. So in the sub, in the spoke, VNet I have where my compute and my private endpoints are. So I needed a DNS forwarder for this. And because the VPN gateway is on the hub VNet, on the example hub VNet, um, it turns out that I actually provisioned a DNS forwarder as an Azure container instance. And when I registered that um, DNS with this VNet, you can see that it points at a custom DNS server on 10.0.1.4, which is inside this VNet. So now I've got a hub and a spoke, and we've got the subnet set up, and we've got private, a DNS forwarder set up for uh, when we get on people on the VPN so that they can pick up that DNS. DNS. None of the internal resources that's really only used for the VPN connection. If we go to the spoke DNS, we can see because it's not a gateway, we just use the standard Azure provided, right? So if um, if we're in the hub, we use the we have access to the custom DNS forwarder, which forwards to the Azure DNS. And, that, and so we, like I said, we needed that for the VPN, but in the rest of the spokes, we can just use the default Azure uh, provided uh, DNS. And the fact that we're going to use DNS forwarders for all those private endpoints doesn't involve there. So now if we look at the private endpoints in the hub, we don't have any private endpoints, right? That's because our key vault now in the real world, we might have a key vault private endpoint for the hub to do managed secrets. But in this case, the only um, private endpoints that we had actually provisioned, I had provisioned, I had provisioned a file, a storage account, file, a storage account, blob, 
uh, private endpoint and I did a key vault private endpoint because it turns out my applications and the spokes all have key vaults for managing secrets and we're going to do those with private endpoints. So the hub had no private endpoints and the spoke has a couple. If we look at the private DNS zones because, can I click on this one? Yeah. So if we look at this one, these are the standard, you can ignore the bottom one. So Microsoft has standard domain names for all of the private endpoint types. I don't know how they came up with them because as you can see, some are windows.net and some are azure.com. Really weird. So the, uh, the DNS zone for private links for blob store is private link.blob.core.windows.net. And so we create a DNS zone for those. So all of the blob DNS entries in my network will all go in the same DNS servers, DNS zone. And I did the same thing for Cosmos, which is documents. And I did the same thing for storage account file and also for Key Vault, right? So those are the, and I only provision those up once. And then every time I add a private endpoint, I add the DNS entry for that private endpoint to the centralized private DNS zone uh, that I did for that domain name. So then if you go and look at the resource group that all this is in, um, right? So like I said, you can create private DNS zones in each of your spokes, but then they can't talk to each other and they can't look each other up. So in my case, I put, I kind of have this central resource group on the hub. And so that hub has where all the VNets are defined, the DNS forwarders in that resource group, uh, the VPN gateway is in that resource group and any, the public IP for the VPN gateway, I think is what's there. And then I had four private, um, DNS zones because I use blobs, Cosmos, File, and Key Vault in this project. If we look though, what happens is um, these private DNS zones exist and we register DNS in them uh, for each private entry, private uh, endpoint that we did. Uh, the question is how do you get these DNS zones linked to the DNS in each of your VNets? Well, it turns out if we look at the virtual networks links here, we can see um, that in the private link.blob.core.windows.net, these are the blob stores. It turns out this private DNS zone for blobs um, using the Microsoft standard naming, there is one link to the hub VNet and one link to the spoke VNet. So this private DNS zone is linked to both VNets. It has a virtual network link. And that means the Azure in that spoke, uh, in that, um, in the hub and in the spoke, any hosts that want to look up the blob endpoints that are there, that are on private endpoints, they can do that because this DNS zone is linked to the DNS in the hub and the spoke VNet. So um, when you do, when you provision the private endpoint, um, you go, it gets registered in the DNS zone. So in this case, I'm looking at a blob DNS zone, a, a private DNS zone, which is where all the blob private endpoints will be registered. And remember this private DNS zone is then linked to the hub and the spoke. So it makes it visible to the hub and the spoke. And so in this case, I have a storage account, um, a blob storage account that has had a DNS entry. So whatever, depending on what the DNS zone is, oh, it's always the same, whatever the zone, DNS zone for blob was that I showed you before, it'll be FSI example zero storage dot blah, 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 right? And that's what this DNS entry will be. Every blob private endpoint that we create in this VNet cluster, the hub and any of the spokes will get registered into this DNS. And so there will be a bunch of A records here, one for each, uh, in this case, one for each blob store. Okay, so if we look at the persist resource group, I just wanted to show, so that's how all of that worked. But the question was like, where did the storage actually get, get you know, like how many pieces got configured through this, right? So we just walked through the DNS for this. If we look at the persistence res um, resource group, uh, it turns out that in this persistence resource group, I haven't provisioned Cosmos yet. I only provisioned a storage account and I had both a file and a blob private endpoint that we created in this resource group. So typically what I'll do is I will provision a storage account in this resource group, but it's really kind of, you know, implemented somewhere else. 
and then I will create the private endpoints for all of the storage models that I want to use. And those will then get registered in the appropriate blob, private DNS and file, private DNS zones um, as A records with the name of the storage account. So this name here, FSI example zero storage, matches the name that was in DNS. And that's it. So I'm probably way over time, but I wanted to give you a feel for how this works. We're going to go back all the way to the beginning of this. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, that's not making anybody dizzy. All right, so that's what we're looking at, right? In this case, um, we have hub and spoke. We have some private endpoints that exist inside the spokes, inside the worker zones, and those are registered with private DNS zone. Um, one for each one of these private endpoints and those zones have common Azure names and then those private DNS zone servers are linked to the local VNet DNS server and a forward um, to the Azure DNS server that's local and so basically uh, that Azure DNS becomes a proxy or forwarder for those private DNS zones and no matter where you sit in this network you can look up any of the private endpoints because the private DNS zones are the same across all the VNets and the private DNS zones are linked to the DNS server in each of those VNets. So everybody can just go local and then route over peering to get actually to those private endpoints if that has been allowed. And that's it. I hope that was useful and covering that in 10 minutes. It only took me like three weeks of work to figure this out. I hope this saves you some time and you don't spend three weeks. Oh, there is a project. Um, which I will put a link up. There is all of this was done in a GitHub project and I will add it to the video and to the blog article. Have a great day.